Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Amanda. I'm so excited about this What's for Dinner today. It is part of a cookbook collab with Tamara from Southern Wife Everyday Life. Make sure you check out her channel and the playlist listed below. But let's go ahead and get into these recipes. So first we have the 10 minute turkey and chicken burgers. So I'm just gonna actually make my side right now, which is some um, veggies that I'm chopping up. I'm gonna roast in the oven. While I'm chopping these up, I'm actually going to um, tell you a little bit about the cookbooks I've chosen. So I actually chose um, three cookbooks to, to, to use in these videos today. They are the Instant Loss cookbooks by Brittany Williams. I'm not sure if any of y'all have ever heard of her, but she um, is a big proponent of using the Instant Pot. Her recipes are not just Instant Pot recipes though, because the ones I've chosen are actually, um, I've either adapted for, you know, the stove or what have you. And, um, or, you know, she has some other options like where you can bake things, things like that. She's got baked goods in there too. So it's all about healthy eating, which is a great thing for the new year for sure. Definitely a good time to, to refocus after all those indulgent holiday meals. And so, um, this was actually the first time I've tried any of her recipes. I'm in her Facebook group and everybody always raves about them. And so I was really excited to get to try some of these. So that's a little bit about the cookbook. I'll have that link below as well. So with these veggies, I've actually just got some squash, zucchini, red onion, and I'm going to, I've sprinkled some olive oil over it. And I'm going to sprinkle some of this garlic, Tuscan garlic seasoning. And I just got that at Sam's. You can get it there. And it's amazing. Like so yummy. We put it on lots of different stuff. And so I'm just going to spread it out on my sheet pan. I baked this at 400 degrees. I believe it was for about 15 to 20 minutes or so. Just until it gets it done to your liking. And you know it's really personal preference on how done everybody likes their vegetables. So now we're going to start in on all the things that go into the turkey burgers to make them nice and flavorful. So I've got some green onions I'm gonna chop up and that's gonna go in there. The recipe actually calls for a half a cup of chopped green onions or chives. You can use either one. Now, I had had a bad experience with turkey in the past. So that what I decided to do after kind of consulting her Facebook group and getting some opinions on things, since I had that bad memory of ground turkey, I wanted to see if they had any suggestions. So some suggested I try ground chicken. So I actually, on this recipe, I did half ground turkey breast, half ground chicken, so I could compare and see which one I liked the best. So I'm just chopping up this spinach here that's gonna go in there as well. That's a half a cup that we'll need for that. Then We'll also add in my seasoning. So that's gonna be just some salt, pepper, dried minced onion, and really whatever you like. You could add all kinds of stuff in here, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever you like. And then I'm adding one egg, as well as a half a cup of old fashioned rolled oats. So this is just the regular oats, not like the quick cooking kind. Now my spinach and onions are going in here. And I'm just going to mix this well. I always like to wear gloves when I handle raw meat because I'm just not a big fan. <laughs> so that's why you see me wearing gloves. But once this gets kind of brought together, we'll start patting it out and make our burgers. Now, if I remember right, this was the ground turkey breast and then I do the ground chicken next. I ended up getting five out of each pound of meat. The recipe mentions, you know, you can form it into six or eight, you know, depending on how big the patties were. This is what, you know, ended up happening for me was the five. But again, that's going to be personal kind of, you know, preference on how, you know, large or small you want the patties. So definitely you can kind of adjust that and get more if you need to. So this is actually the ground chicken and I've got the exact same ingredients going in here. And that's just going to, again, get mixed well and, and make those patties out. So I like getting all of them ready to go. And then that way, once I start cooking them, I can just keep going in another, you know, almost like an assembly line of, you know, putting one batch into the skillet and, you know, getting that cooked. And then the next batch and so on like that. So it makes it very handy. And this would also be easy if you wanted to prep ahead. You could go ahead and get these done and then, you know, put those, cover them up and put them in the refrigerator. And then you could just pull them out when you're ready to cook them the next day or that later that day. So that would be very handy as well. Save you a little time for dinner for sure. So now we're going to move on to cooking these burgers. In a skillet over medium heat, you're going to add three tablespoons of olive oil 
and then we're going to brown the patties on that first side for five minutes now I have to say I was kind of concerned with this being turkey and chicken and all that they're just making sure it was done so I love what she tells you to do on you know to help kind of cook these all over and that is once you flip them you cook them for an additional three minutes but you cover it so that really helped I kind of I thought well will it brown on both sides like that and it actually did that worked perfect I was really I actually might try that with my hamburgers because sometimes I'll you know I like to make sure they're done any kind of ground meat like that so so in another pot I've added some chicken broth to get another side going that's going to be a grain mixture I got from Trader Joe's and I'll show you that in a minute so these patties here are all done I'm pulling them off and putting them on a pan uh, on a plate and then I'm going to sit them to the side make sure you put foil over them to keep them warm while you finish up cooking the rest of your your hamburger or not hamburgers but turkey burgers and chicken burgers also just as a good reminder anytime you're cooking with any meat it's always handy to have a thermometer I didn't show myself doing this and I should have probably filmed that but I did check the temperature of each of these just to ensure they're completely done so always make sure if you have you know meat thermometer you, you take a, a measure of the temperature and make sure everything's getting cooked for you so in that pot I, like I said I had the chicken broth I added some of the chicken bouillon as well as some all-purpose seasoning and then I did some onion powder and garlic powder which I put in almost everything I cook and um, so this is a harvest grains blend we really enjoyed this I needed um, I wish I could go to Trader Joe's again we don't have a Trader Joe's locally and I'm um, hopefully sometime you know at some point I can get to go there again but it is like my one of my most favorite stores so and by the way if, if you love Trader Joe's too let me know what your favorite products are down in the comments below because I'd love to see what all y'all like at Trader Joe's as well so while I'm finishing up these burgers I just wanted to tell you that like I love cookbooks so I was so excited about this collab I have probably about 200 maybe a little over 200 cookbooks I collect them but I'm horrible about using them to cook with I tend to get my recipes you know online so this was a great way to kind of get me into that thing of, okay, let's look at our cookbooks. Let's decide to make something that, you know, is actually from a recipe book and, and get started on that. Cause I just, I love cookbooks. Um, they're just, I love to read through them and, you know, especially if they have stories in them and things like that. So, and, um, so here's that grain mixture again, it's fully cooked. I'm just kind of making sure all the liquid had evaporated out of it. We're going to set that to the side while we finish getting everything else done and we're going to be pulling out those veggies here in just a moment too this was such an amazing dinner i really like it was just so healthy it didn't feel you know heavy and like i said after you know an indulgent you know holiday season this is very uh, very refreshing change of pace so this was really really good we i will definitely be making those turkey burgers and chicken burgers again we liked them both so we'll do them both again it's so easy to do them all and then we've got a few extra cooked up for the rest of the week and it just makes a great healthy meal so let's get on to the next recipe it's easy steak bites with peppers so first of all let me tell you all about this okay i had had this for a while it's like a i don't know if you call it a julienne tool i'm not really sure but i got it a long time ago and you can see it makes perfect like little you know like when people spiralize zucchini and stuff like that i was so impressed with that it was the first time i used it and i will definitely be using that again i absolutely loved it it was a handy tool for sure so now i'm just getting some onions and now let me tell you a little bit about this recipe so this recipe calls for several veggies to be thinly sliced and you're going to see me doing those but um it actually what gave air fryer instructions it also mentioned that if you do not have an air fryer you could make it you know in a large pan on the stove so what i did was actually i started this out on the stove in my cast iron skillet and you'll see that in just a minute because i want to make sure to show you both ways of how i did it once i got it cooking in the cast iron in order to get the meat done the veggies got way overcooked and by that i mean because they were cut so thinly which is what the recipe called for because really it was geared towards the air fryer um they almost disintegrated like they not completely but you'll see what i mean in just a minute i was super surprised at that so if i ever cook it in the skillet again i will definitely cut the veggies 
thicker. So just keep that in mind that if you, you know, make this recipe and you end up, you know, going ahead and, and wanting to do it on the stove, just make sure you cut your veggies thicker so that it takes longer for them to break down so that your meat can get done and not overcook your veggies. I was a little worried about cooking this in the air fryer because I haven't branched out a lot in my air fryer. I still do a lot of the, you know, frozen foods and things like that. And once I saw what it was doing in that cast iron skillet, I thought, okay, I'm going to try the air fryer because her picture of this looked so good. And I thought, yeah, that's not what it looked like in that cast iron skillet. <laughs> and so I went ahead and, um, you know, and did the air fryer too. And, and we'll, I'll show you that too. So we'll get to that. So in that, that big bowl, I had some steak strips and then I've, you know, going ahead and putting all those, you know, cut up veggies. I've got some garlic going in here. And then, um, and that's just, I mean, it said six cloves. I just add however much. I love garlic, so we usually add quite a bit. And then the seasonings it calls for is like a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, a tablespoon of dried parsley flakes, and two teaspoons of taco seasoning. Again, this is a situation where you could add some extra seasonings if you want. Just, you know, I, I'll... Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I make it just like the recipe calls for. It just kind of depends. But you're going to mix all this together well. And if you're going to put this in the skillet, make sure your skillet's nice and hot. And then that way it's ready to cook all of that. And I also noticed part of what led me to the air fryer thing was I noticed this was crowding my pan quite a bit. And I thought I want to make sure it gets done. But like doesn't, you know, like if you overcrowd it too much, obviously it's not going to get done, you know, as quickly. And it's going to even disintegrate those vegetables even more. So this was kind of midway through the cooking process. That's when I realized, you know, I'm probably going to try it in the air fryer as well. So I've got that other half of the mixture going in the air fryer. The air fryer directions say 370 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes during halfway through. So I did six and six. That worked fine. I might have could have even went a little under, especially if you don't like your steak all the way done. Like if you want it maybe medium or medium well, you definitely want to go a little on the lower end but I was making about half the recipe in the air fryer so if I'd had the whole recipe it probably would have been you know the accurate time for that and as you can see that really did cook down those veggies that's why I went ahead and and tried the air fryer as well so this is just I I'm trying this for the first time it was like a rice cauliflower mix that I picked up uh, at Kroger and it said to just cook it in some water which I did chicken broth just to add a little more flavor and here that that to me looks so much better i don't know like and it it does the air fryer looks more visually appealing than the cast iron i noticed so uh, i definitely recommend the air fryer for this but if you don't have an air fryer it's fine you can still do it on the skillet just chop those veggies a little thicker so now here they are you can see a lot of the caramelized bits and also i think this let a lot of the moisture from the veggies drip down into the bottom of the air fryer basket so that really helped as well now i'm finishing up the cauliflower rice mixture i did have to drain a little bit of that liquid out the it said to cover it and boil it for three minutes but the liquid didn't evaporate in that amount of time so i did end up you know draining that a little bit so here it is finished this was really good and we really like that cauliflower rice my son who absolutely loves rice said he actually really liked that a lot and i thought this is i need to try to maybe make this change a little more so very good meal for sure so next up we have the lazy day minestrone so this i love soup this time of year especially when it's cooler you know sometimes even pretty cold it's just soup it's just comforting so this was i was really excited about making this one so i'm just chopping up some onions here i did make a little bit of change to the the recipe since the recipe actually didn't call for onions but i love onions and everything so you know i wanted to go ahead and add those especially in soup anyways so I just added over medium heat some olive oil there and I'm just going to saute up these onions just a little bit, get some color on them. This recipe also calls for a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. So I went ahead and used my new Pampered Chef juicer. I was excited to get to use that. If you um, want to check out that Pampered Chef haul, I'll link that video below as well. I really enjoyed that juicer. That was handy. I like, I like the handheld one too, but this was nice because then I could just measure it out easily out of the little um, bulb on the bottom. And then I just saved the rest for another recipe. So that, that worked out really well. And um, for the most part, I tried to keep this recipe, you know, fairly close to it. But I did, like I said, make a few changes. I added the onions. The recipe actually calls for um, 
five cloves of garlic. I added some of these little frozen cubes of garlic that I had, and so that worked out really well. I've got three cups of chicken broth going in here. The recipe called for vegetable broth, but I um, didn't have any on hand, so I thought, well, chicken broth should work fine. And I actually included the juice in my tomatoes, the recipe mentioned to drain the tomatoes, but I like that tomato juice. So I've got a can of chopped tomatoes going in there, a teaspoon of a lemon juice that's going to just kind of help brighten those flavors up. Then I've got a teaspoon of oregano and a teaspoon of basil going in there as well. That's a can of white beans rinsed and drained. I'm going to be adding four cups of frozen veggies to this. The recipe mentions broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. I actually did not have that mixture on hand, so I used cauliflower, carrots, and green beans, and that worked out just fine. I um, also threw in three stalks of celery there that I had diced, and I'm adding a little bit of that chicken bouillon because I use unsalted broth. So this just adds a little bit of flavor and salt to it as well without going too much there. You see me adding a little extra liquid there. Definitely keep an eye on any kind of soup. Sometimes you have to do that, especially if you're gonna have pasta going in. So this is one cup of pasta. You can use any kind of pasta you like. And I'm adding a fourth a cup of, fr of uh, grated Parmesan cheese. It does freshly grated. I didn't have the little block on hand, so I just used grated and it worked fine. So this, it was really good. I probably could have even added a little more liquid to it. And when I reheated it the next day, I actually did add a little more, but it was delicious. It was very light, healthy. I feel like soups are a great way to pack in just about as many veggies as you can. We even talked about we might add spinach to it next time. So it was definitely good. I highly recommend it. So next up we have peanut butter blondies. So I know, I know, you hear blondies and you see chickpeas going in there. So it's probably confusing if you've never made these before or made something like this before. But it works. It's unbelievable how it tastes like when you know that there's, you know, chickpeas in there. So I've got two cups of chickpeas drained and rinsed that went in there. A fourth a cup of honey. A fourth a cup of peanut butter or almond butter, whatever you need to use there. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. I did not add salt because my beans had a little bit of salt. They were low sodium, but you know, add a fourth teaspoon of sea salt if your, you know, chickpeas are not seasoned at all. Uh, and be careful not to choose chickpeas that are salty. Like mine had very low sodium, so it worked okay. You're going to need a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder and an eighth a teaspoon of baking soda. And you're going to add in around a fourth a cup of chocolate chips once this all gets blended and done. You can kind of, you know, we, I threw in just a few extra because we like chocolate chips. You're going to process this till it's completely smooth. It's going to be thick, so expect that. And then you stir in those chocolate chips, you know, after that gets done. So this was really like I, it's so funny because my husband was filming this and he is like such a picky eater and i was like thinking i don't know like is he going to try it after he sees the chickpeas go in there and he actually was like yeah i'll try it and so um he actually really loved these i was so surprised now i will say when it first came out of the oven i was not a huge fan i felt like i could taste the chickpeas so I would let them cool for a little bit before you try them. So make sure you keep that in mind. So you're going to just bake these in a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes or until, you know, golden brown. We really enjoyed these and we'll definitely make them again. I am blown away that my picky husband loved them. I, that, I just can't get over that. So highly recommend. These were amazing. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to join my YouTube family if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell so you're alerted every time I post videos like these. Also, don't forget to check out that playlist below. I'm so excited to see all the delicious recipes in the cookbook collab. Have a great day, a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next one.